Hi guys, welcome to the vlog. Today I thought we'd just get started with a little get ready with me because tonight I am heading out to the Priscilla premiere. Like ever since I saw the trailer for this film, I was like, <gasps> It's like a convergence of all my favorite things from A24, Sofia Coppola wrote and directed it. Um, also Priscilla Presley is one of the, the greatest icons of the late 60s, early 70s. So today's makeup is going to be inspired by her. So I'm starting off with like a super matte foundation. Now I'm just going to conceal using the Ilia. Let's set this all with a powder. For the brow, it's gonna keep things very simple and straight. We're off to a very good start, ladies. I'm gonna go in with this this like mauve plum shade right over here. And then with like a dense brush, I'm just going to start dusting this at the inner and the outer corner of my eyes. So now with like a fluffier brush, I'm gonna start like really intensifying the inner corners. To get your blackest eyeliner, and we're gonna start doing a cat eye. We're not gonna get the center of the eye, so we did the outer and now we're also gonna line the inner. Very cat-like. So now I'm gonna get an angled brush and I'm gonna dip into the darkest shade of this palette and I'm just going to pat it along the eyeliner we just did. And also in that center that we skipped. Now it is time to tight line. My optometrist hates when I do this. Now with that same brush, I'm just gonna get some extra powder and just smoke out the edges. So now I'm gonna get an angled brush, I'm gonna go back with the darkest shade, and this is where we're gonna draw that 60s flick. It's like a extra, it's supposed to really, I mean it really opens up your eyes. Yeah, this is giving like modern 60s inspired look because it is 2023. We've definitely minimized. Okay, mascara, this is my favorite by Hymish. You don't really need to go that crazy on the top, but go ham on the bottom lashes though. For the falsies, I'm using these ones from Imo. They're very long and kind of spiky, kind of like anime, but I really like how they're still quite wispy. Very appropriate for Halloween, mm-hmm. For my blush, I'm gonna go in with my favorite. This one is by Onir Muted Blusher. And the final step, lips. This one is the Charlotte Til Tilbury Pillow Talk. And this is just a really beautiful pale pink. Talk about glam to the gods, wow. And voila, there we have it, the finished makeup look. Right, we should probably figure out what we're gonna wear tonight. I also wanna thank ThreadUp for sponsoring this video. Y'all know that I love to thrift, but these days it's uh, it's becoming increasingly harder to find the time to thrift, but this is where ThreadUp just comes in and scratches that itch for me. So ThreadUp is an online consignment store that carries thousands of your favorite brands, but it organizes it so beautifully and neatly. It can sort by size, color, texture, and more, and then it'll scrub its entire database so that you can get some cute items. They also have this new feature where you can shop other people's favorites, including mine, uh, and I'll leave that link down below. But Either way, I wanted to share with you guys the items that I got this round. So this is my first look. I am obsessed with this really cozy, lived-in Argyle printed sweater. I'm just a sucker for cozy knits and it looks so sleeked paired with this leather skirt and some boots. And the estimated price for this was $53, but I got it at ThreadUp for $21.60. Following that uniform train, this is a sweater that I got. It's like this really cozy oatmeal polo sweater. And I just love the way it looks with this, this pleated skirt. I think the reason why I'm so drawn to uniforms is because I never had a uniform at school. So I, I always got to wear whatever I wanted to wear. So it's it's one of those like the grass is always greener on the other side type of situations, but this is why I like voluntarily wear one now. So this Lord & Taylor pullover sweater originally estimated at 105, but I got it for 1250. I feel like this wouldn't be a proper thread up haul if I didn't have a lovers and friends piece somewhere slipped in. But here it is, guys. This is a gorgeous, romantic navy lace blouse. I also appreciate the fact that it's pretty well ventilated because right now in LA, we are having a hot autumn. Like it is 85 degrees outside. So this is gonna be the perfect thing to wear on a night out, like a concert perhaps, or even just like a nice little dinner. So this is probably my most favorite piece that I got this time around at ThreadUp. It is this Allison and Olivia striped turtleneck, but it's in this gorgeous like glittery fabric. 
I don't know, it also makes me look freaking snatched. Okay, so the estimated price for this sweater was 458, but I got it for 80.99 and it's in pristine condition. And for the grand finale, we have this quintessentially fall floral dress from Reformation. I feel like there truly is a floral dress for each season. And this one is autumn AF. Just like a beautifully rich chestnut color. And I feel like it is very flattering for my skin tone and my hair. It just, it's all very cohesive. And I actually think that this is the look that I'm gonna wear tonight. It's very apparent that I am stoked on my pieces and I love that when I use ThreadUp, I can be a more sustainable shopper. I feel like this is probably the best way to try out new fashion trends because you're already shopping from pre-existing items. So if you guys are interested in shopping my favorites and shopping on ThreadUp for yourself, you can go to my link down below. You can also get an extra 40% off when you use my code GENM40. I'll leave all that information in the description box, so click it. Okay, so we just received word that the premiere is canceled today. Sorry, I shouldn't be smiling, but I think I'm just smiling because I, I put so much effort for this premiere only for it to be canceled. Welcome to England, guys. We are currently in London right now. This is This marks the sixth day of us being in England, but today will be my official solo day. I thought that this would be the perfect day for us to hang out, get some one-on-one -on -one because it's been a hot minute. I actually have nothing planned for today, which is quite uncharacteristic of me, but I thought it would just, you know, maintain the mystery of life and just see what happens. It's actually crazy to have like a full day of nothing planned. <laughs> Every time I come back to England, I'm always taken aback that like, I can't do my hair in the bathroom. There's no outlets for, for hair accessories, only shavers, which I find interesting. The thing is, like, if you allow shavers, like, why not allow a blow dryer, you know? <laughs> kind of trippy how long my hair is getting. It took me forever to grow out of that bob, that black bob with the bangs. When I look back, I look at that haircut and I'm like, what was I thinking? Like, why did I think that was gonna be a good idea? Like I genuinely, like, I guess like my inspiration for that hair was like, I thought I was gonna look like this, like Natalie Portman from like Leon and the Professional. But instead I just, I just looked haggard all the time. This was one of the rare times that my mom pulled me aside and was like, I know you want me to have like a softer touch with you, but I just need to tell you, you need to change your hair. You gotta diet, you gotta, you gotta do something about it because it's just not working. I look back and I was like, yeah, you're right. Anyway, uh, I think it's gonna be a long time until I go for a bob and bangs again. It's two o'clock, I'm on holiday, I have no plans. It's like 90 degrees outside but I really want to try and make it before the sun disappears because the thing with English weather, it really does keep you on your toes. Like sure, it's sunny right now, but it says in an hour, it will be cloudy. So like we're staying like right across the street from Hyde Park. So I feel like that might be the best bet for me to just relax. I brought some books, I brought my journal. I feel like one of the biggest questions that we get when we travel with London is how is it like traveling internationally with a toddler? And I think because this is our third time coming here, it's it's a lot better, you know? I mean, obviously the flight isn't my favorite thing to do, but it wasn't as bad as I made it out in my head, especially the first time I felt so anxious. I also think my postpartum anxiety just had like a ch it's chokehold on me. So now that, that this was the third time, I just felt more relaxed, I felt more prepared. I knew that I wanted to bring a ton of snacks, snacks in all varieties. We also brought this this reusable sticker sheet, which was really cool. Like that kept him busy for a good 30 minutes. What we do on the plane stays on the plane. So whether it was snacks, screen time, all of that stuff, we just let him do it. And honestly, he was a freaking champ. So overall, it was pretty good. I would say like the sticker sheets and the snacks were the biggest help though. Hello. Oh, wow. Um, could, could, wow, that's great. How about uh, five? Okay, thanks. All right, bye. Okay, cool. I guess I, I have an appointment for afternoon tea. Yay! <laughs> I've actually never had afternoon tea by myself. Solo afternoon tea sesh. I do love afternoon tea. Oh my God, this what a delight. 
All right, guys, I am ready to go. I just wanted to do a little quick outfit of the day. So I'm wearing like this black corset top from Rumored, these checkered gingham pants from Stalnanda from years ago. And then my shoes are the opening ceremony UGG collab. This is gonna be just my tea time outfit. The tea house that I'm going to just happens to be downstairs from this hotel. This is the purse that I've been rocking. I'm having like a big baby blue, stone blue moment. If you know, you know. Hold on, let me show you guys what lip I'm wearing. It's Lip Alchemy by Sereni. If I'm ever wearing like a nude lip that's kind of glossy, it's this. All right, let's go to tea time. Let's see if they can fit me in a little bit earlier. For one person. Okay. So all the desserts are based off fashion designers. Over here, we've got a Vivian Westwood cookie. So I am scurrying back to the hotel. I literally just got back to the hotel room because my pop, my top set to just pop open right as I was in the middle of Hyde Park. I'm just gonna change my top and try and go back outside because it's really, really nice outside. It's 5.45, so I still wanna get a nice walk in. The afternoon tea was freaking delicious, uh, but I think I just wanna kinda, you know, burn off some of the afternoon tea fuel. Wow, what an adventure. I really do think that I did everything that I love today and it was all like spontaneous. I had such an amazing time. This was honestly my perfect day. Since we were in West London, I thought that I might as well just walk to all the tourist destinations because they're right there. So you guys saw I went to Hyde Park and then I saw Buckingham Palace and I've actually never got up that close actually, as close as I did on my own. And it was really amazing just to be able to take my time and stay there as long as I wanted to. My soundtrack was Fred again, and I just started to well up. I think it was just the fact that we were all congregated here to look at this piece of architecture, just what humans have built. I walked to Soho and I was in the search for food. As I was passing by, I saw the comedy store and I was like, whoa, we have one in LA. Going to a comedy show on your own is the move. Like it's watching, it's like watching an interactive movie. Today we did a total of 21,683 steps. I walked 9.43 miles, wow. I loved that I was able to just make executive choices for myself. I think, you know, being married and being a parent, you have to, like the choices that you make, you kind of consider everyone involved. So it felt really nice to just be 100% just 
like do what I wanted to do, I suppose. What really just made the experience really fun for me was that I was able to squeeze some reading in. So I brought two books with me on this trip. Well, I brought my Kindle. So technically I have like a lot of books in there, but first is Life by Keith Richards. Fucking love memoirs. I don't know why I'm using such a vulgar language, but I love memoirs and Rolling Stones is just like, I, I don't know, like an like, iconic English band. And so I was just reading his life story. I, I especially love rock and roll memoirs because, you know, shit went down in the 70s, the 60s. And so I just, I'm just like very fascinated by that time period. The other book that I brought out from home is Life 3.0 by Max Tegmark. We're essentially in the middle of an AI revolution that is accelerating extremely quickly and it's really changing our life. I think I needed to diversify some opinions on those who believe that AI could be aligned with humans' values. Like, like it's like a, like, a, like a super intelligence that's benevolent and can collaborate with us. Max Tegmark is just kind of really breaking it down. I feel like this is a good book if you wanna learn more about AI and why this is such a crucial moment in time. I like having a balance of two books, one where it's more, uh, it like demands more of my attention, like my full attention, and then just something that's like fun and, and loose and you know, it's just, it's just like fun stories from the past or more like reckless stories from the past.